morning YouTube. It is my very first day of school with students. I've actually already had one class. It was a little hectic this morning. I wanted to make sure I had everything set up and prepared. So there's a couple things I want to do with you today. I want to show you how my classroom turned out. I want to talk about the activities that I'm doing with my students. Um, and I think maybe what I'll do is I'll probably talk about honors right now because I have one more honors class coming in. So as I mentioned in my previous video, I have two honors and two AP sections this year. And with honors, I'm doing much of the same of what I did last year in that I'm doing Freyer a friend, like that's going to take up the bulk of our time. Um, it was kind of interesting in my first class period. You could definitely tell uh, it was hard to break the ice a little bit. I'm not a big icebreaker person, but I like the Freyer a friend because it's just one-on-one. -on -one. It's not like in a big group setting. So I gave the students the Freyer a friend. They had 10 minutes to interview each other. And then when the ice really hit was when I asked the whole class to introduce themselves. Um, so I said, you know, does anybody want to be brave and introduce their friend? And I actually modeled this for the students by standing up there and showing them my Freyer diagram and um, they kind of were just silent and I, I must have waited probably about a good minute and a half but I like wouldn't let it go like I literally like I am the master of wait time I waited them out and finally I had um, two really brave students um, you know introduce each other and so that went really really well i was happy that they were brave enough to do that um and then after that that kind of broke the ice and then there was another team that did that so that was good um and one of the things i talked to them about is like you have to talk in front of the class so i thought this was one way to kind of get you to feel a little bit more comfortable and they did a great job doing that so all in all my first class went very well today i'm excited to have one more honors class and then i'll be sure to show you what i'm doing with ap today probably Probably during my lunch period. I just finished with three of my four classes and I thought I would show you what I did with AP today. Um, typically I would do a lot of the same stuff that I do with Honors Chem in that, you know, I ask them to make a name tent, I talk a little bit about myself and my background, um, and then we kind of navigate into the students doing a practice test. But this year I wanted it to be a little bit more interactive, kind of just see how the students work together. And so I create a set of stations for my AP students. Some of these stations are things that I've developed, but then some of these stations I actually got the idea for in the AP Facebook group. So if you're not in the AP Facebook group, you definitely need to head over there um, because that was just a wonderful resource that someone posted. So I have made some modifications to make it more my own, but um, I think a lot of these stations really help the students to review some vital content. So I'm going to show you what they look like. So come along with me. I'll show you what my stations look like, and then we'll talk about how they did with them. My students have their very first assessment tomorrow. It's a summer assignment test. Um, it's just really general information, um, for example, like nomenclature, mole conversions, um, you know, dimensional analysis, all those good things. And so I wanted to make sure that because I'm collecting their notebooks, that their notebooks are nice and organized. So what I did is I created a checklist, which has the students kind of checking off that they did all of these things. I provide a model. I created these little um like these little well they have choices but labels for the students to use so that you could do summary notebook then I also have plain white problem notebook and so what they do is they have to attach these to their notebooks kind of similar to the model that they have here and it provides an area for them to write their name one of the things that really slowed me down when I was checking notebooks is the fact that they wouldn't have them labeled. So I didn't know which one was which and it was driving me crazy. So I opted to do this and I think this will help me get through the notebooks a lot faster. The second station was having my students getting familiar with online web learning. So I had my students join our online web learning class. This is something that I use all year long. Um, and so this was a really simple station. It actually had them take themselves through like a tutorial on how OWL works. So this was another station. These two stations, the notebook station, the OWL station were required. But then we get into the content stations. So the, the first content station is particle models. So I had my students use this sheet and I had them analyze some particle models. So this isn't so easy with one hand, but I'll show you what they kind of look like. So I did laminate them. 
And I really like this because it really forces the students to look at the different terminology. Like, for example, um, one of the things it talks about is um, which one involves ionic solids, right? Not just solids, but ionic solids. So, for example, you know, we want the students to pick up this card because, you know, that represents an ionic solid. Um, sometimes, you know, like if students pick up this card, even though, whoops, even though it's solid, right? It's not ionic solid. There's no charges. So I really like the question set that I put together for this. I think it was really valuable for the students to pay attention to the different particles that represent matter. Um, you can see I assess them in terms of, um, you know, what involves metals, ionic solids, covalent compounds. So um, it really helped them to internalize like what each of these model cards mean. The second station was um, content station, I should say. This is really the fourth station, but the second content station was a Blookit game. So the students can join the Blookit, scan the QR code, and play. Um, I told them that they should not be using their polyatomic ions because I do require my students to memorize the polyatomic ions and charges as well as the monatomic ions um, with more than one oxidation state. So, um, so this was another station that the students could play Blookit. Essentially, I put periodic tables out with them so that they didn't feel tempted to use their polyatomic ions but they did very well. This station, um, I didn't make any modifications to except making the sign. I love this. Oh, no, I lied. I did make some modifications. So the sign was pretty, was something that I created, but the conversions are not. So that was something that I ripped off of the AP Facebook group. But then I did add this question to include um, cubed units. So I thought this was kind of fun for conversions and the students practicing dimensional analysis because they're definitely going to have a lot of dimensional analysis in chemistry. And then last but not least, I have a station on reactions. So there were three, actually really four reactions, and I gave them this paper where they had to write out the balanced formula equation and classify each reaction. And so all of these QR codes, when they scan them, they take the students to a, um, a, a GIF where the students can see the actual reaction in action. So um, yeah, so I, these were a really great set of stations. Like I said, I didn't require the content stations, but I did require those two stations over there. One of my goals whenever I start school with students is to give them an idea of the classroom culture and the classroom environment. And I feel like station learning, any kind of interaction that you do, really helps to set the stage for what the students can expect. Most importantly, it just gets them talking, even if they find just one person they can talk to. I can't tell you how many times students would come to me and say, as a result of taking this class, I've met some of my best friends. And I just, I love when I get that feedback because it makes me feel like not only did I teach them chemistry, but I also taught them some interpersonal skills. And that's always my goal. So, um, so all in all, I would say it was a wonderful day. It has gone by so fast. Um, so what I think I'm going to do right now is I have to finish recording a video for the EP class. I'm going to finish that up and then I will give you a quick tour of all of the classroom decorations that I've put into my room. I am so proud of it. I mean, my students said, you know, this is a beautiful classroom. And I was like, well, thank you. Like I, I did it just for you. So um, I'm just so excited to show you what I made. So I'll be back in a few minutes after I teach my next class. And then we'll talk about how my day was overall. And I'll show you the rest of the stuff that I've done. Okay, it's the end of the day. I made it through my first day of school with students and I did have a wonderful day with my kids. I am very optimistic and excited to just see how the year goes. Um, I'm feeling really good about what I did with the kids today. Um, and I think the kids did appreciate the opportunity to do stations instead of me like talking at them the whole time. Even my honors kids, the ability for them to do the fray or a friend instead of me just kind of like talking at them with the norms. I think they get that in all their classes. So it was really nice to kind of change things up. So now what I thought I would show you is give you a little bit of a classroom tour. I've completely changed everything for the most part in the classroom. There's some things that are the same, but there's a lot that I wanna show you. So let's get started. Let's first start at the front of the classroom. So this is what I was talking about last week that I was working on. Now, I hopefully, this looks familiar to you, especially if you're a chemistry teacher. So if you've read the book, Lessons in Chemistry, I made my own Elizabeth Zott, of course, of what I perceive her to be. Um, the actual book cover I have over here, right? So it looks like this, so we'll hold it next to it, right? Check it out. So I tried to make an identical 
Elizabeth Zott, and I thought that was kind of cool. And obviously, she says, let's get started all the time. Um, so I absolutely love this. I think it came out so nicely. Um, big fan, big fan. And then, so that pretty much takes care of like this part in the front here. I already showed you um, that I have the atoms, but I did add some like twinkling lights and it is incredibly bright in here. So you probably can't really see them, but I did add some twinkling lights. I did add a little you matter sign up there as well. I think that looks really nice. I have not had a chance to do the bulletin board here. Quite frankly, I'm not I'm not completely sold on my ideas, so I'm going to leave it blank and I'm going to live with it and maybe something will come to me. But like I said, I'm pretty happy with what I see here. Um, I put all of the um, atoms like kind of up to this wall. And then you'll also notice my amazing, beautiful curtains that my aunt, who just learned how to sew, made for me. So I am a huge fan of these. I got, and I, you can't see it because it's really bright, but this is actually chemistry fabric from Spoonflower. So I love it. My aunt did a wonderful job. So shout out to my auntie. I just absolutely love it. I think it looks so nice and so pretty and so homey. Um, I also got some new planters. These are actually 3D printed. Aren't these incredible? Incredible. Like, it's, it, they look like they would be like ceramic or something, but I absolutely love them. I love the colors. Um, if you're interested in purchasing those, I can give you the link, but um, I love it. I think, I think um, Ben is his name. He just did a fantastic job with these. And then I didn't do much change over here. I still have my, what does a scientist look like? I just simply did not have time to do anything here. And then of course I have my Morgan Harper Nichols quote sitting up here and I did put my stool covers right all on so that looks really really cute so I would say overall when I kind of stand back here and I look at my classroom and I look at it and I do a scan it's like wow it's it's beautiful and and my students said so too so I am just over the moon. There's really not much else that I feel that I need to do. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, maybe someday I'll do something with what does the scientist look like. But for right now, we're going to keep it. We're going to enjoy it. And uh, I hope my students do too. So this is the first day of my 17th year teaching down in the books. And I will say it absolutely was a very nice, successful day. Um, but I want to hold on to this feeling because I know not all days are going to be good days, but I will say this was definitely a good day. And I look forward to a lot of the memories that I'm going to be building with my students this year. If you started school um, the first week of September like me, I hope you had a wonderful first week of school. I hope it was just everything you thought it would be and more. Um, but for right now, I think I'm going to leave this vlog right here. I want to thank you so much for watching this channel. And I want to thank you for just always doing what's best for your students. I mean, the fact that you give up your personal time to watch um, videos and professional development with me means so much. So thank you for your time. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your weekend. And I'll be sure to check in with you guys next week. Bye.